Hi guys, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking to sellers and answering their frequently asked questions. First question, when is the best time of year to sell your house? You can sell your house any time of the year, but there are definitely some months and even specific days when selling can be easier, faster, and even more profitable. In general, homes sell faster during the spring and summer months and seem to slow down when we get into fall and winter. If you want to maximize the amount of money you make on your home, one study from Adam Data shows that if you sell in May, June, or July, those are gonna be your best bets. Homes sold in June make about 9.2% more on average, while homes sold in May make about 7.4% more. There is also data that shows that the day you list your home also matters. According to Redfin, homes that are listed on a Thursday sell for more money and at a faster pace than homes listed on other days of the week. I didn't realize this before making this video. I was already listing homes on Thursdays just based on what my experience had taught me. You see, when you list homes on a Thursday, people see them on Friday when they're looking up homes to look at that weekend. This way, you get several showings all lined up in a row on the same weekend. And you can honestly tell the buyer's agent that you have multiple showings. Because of this, a lot of times you'll get offers right away because people know other people are looking and they don't wanna let that home pass by if they really liked it. This method usually gets you an offer very quickly. All of these strategies and data don't help you if you don't have your home priced right and show ready to begin with. If your home isn't priced right, it's hard to get people to even come see it. If it's priced right, but the pictures don't look like the ones you've posted online or there's some underlying issue that you haven't disclosed, buyers will change their mind after seeing the property anyway. Real estate is a very localized industry and the right time to sell really depends on your market and your area, as well as your unique situation as a homeowner. There's some things you'll wanna think about and investigate or ask these questions to a real estate agent. The kinds of questions you'll want to ask is how in demand is the real estate in my area right now? Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? You'll maximize profits and minimize time on the market if you list your home during a seller's market. Another question to ask yourself is how much have you paid off on your mortgage loan? The more you've paid off, the more you can stand to gain in profits. Ask yourself, how comfortable am I financially? Selling a home doesn't come for free and neither does buying a new home if that's on the agenda. Think about if you have the funds you need to go through with the sale of your home. Some sellers think that selling your home for sale by owner will save them money. However, listing with a realtor has been shown to get a home sold for 11% more than a home sold for sale by owner. That means even if you're paying a realtor 6% commission fee, then you come up 5% higher on average listing your home with an agent than you would if you had sold it on your own. Not to mention the headache that having a realtor sell it for you will save you. Also ask, what are your local market conditions? You might consider gauging local market trends like how many active listings are on the market in your area. What is the median sold price for homes in your area? Second question. How long will it take to sell my house? Time to sell really depends on where you're located and your local market conditions. Your listing price, the condition of your home, you or your agent's marketing skills, or your staging have a big effect on how much the home will be sold for. It's important to understand how quickly a home will sell in your specific market. Ask a local agent, what is the average number of days a home is on the market in your area? Question three, how much is my home worth? There are two main factors that determine your home's worth, the condition of your home and the demand for homes like it. To gauge what your home might go for in the open market, look up comparable homes in your area. These homes are also called comps 
This is what a real estate agent would use to determine the value of your house if they were going to list it for you. Make sure the listings that you're comparing your home to are of comparable size and condition as yours. You can also request a free analysis with most real estate agents in your area. If you need a referral for an agent who can do an analysis for you in your area, feel free to send me an email and I'll set you up with one that can do that for you. Question four, how much does it cost to sell my home? There are many costs involved with selling a house. Fortunately, most of those costs don't require an out-of-the-pocket payment per se. Instead, many of these costs come out of the proceeds of the sales at closing. Generally, you can expect to pay between 10 to 12% of your home sale price in expenses and fees. These fees might include things such as the real estate agent's commission, which is generally about 6%, 3% going to your buyer's agent and 3% going to your listing agent. Staging and prepping your home might cost up to 1%. These would include things such as repainting, getting carpets professionally cleaned. You may even hire a professional stager to stage your home for you. Repair costs, these may be 1% also. Maybe you're repairing torn window screens on a window or a cracked toilet seat replacing light bulbs, any broken fixtures, things that you see that you know people will notice when you're showing your home and you wanna do ahead of time to make it look the best it can. Home ownership and overlap costs could be up to 1%. These things could be things that come up at closing such as maybe you haven't paid your property taxes yet for the year and you have to pay for the amount of time you lived in the home before the new owner takes over. Closing costs are generally between 1% to 3% of the sale price of the home. Call around to title companies and get an estimate of the closing costs in your area so that you can plan. Number five, should I make repairs before I list my home for sale? Many times home buyers want a move-in ready house, one that doesn't require a lot of work before moving in. This is especially true among young home buyers. 76% say that a move-in ready home is a must. For this reason, you want to consider making repairs before listing your home on the market. Small cosmetic repairs can be a good idea to make your home more marketable. For larger, bigger repairs, you have two options. Make the repairs up front and pay the bill yourself or lower the price accordingly. Most buyers will not pay top dollar if they know there is a big expensive project waiting in the wings to be fixed. If you wanna get ahead on repairs, consider doing a seller's inspection. For a few hundred dollars, you can have a home inspector come to your home and inspect your home for potential issues and problems. You can use their report to guide you in your pre-listing repair projects. Doing this can make your home more marketable. Plus, it can prevent time-consuming inspection problems later on. Keep in mind that your state may require you to disclose certain issues that come up during an inspection. Question six, should I use a real estate agent? There are pros and cons to using a real estate agent. First and foremost, a real estate agent can guide you in the sale of your home. They can list your home for you coordinate photography and showings, market the property for you, and walk you through to closing. They will also have access to local market data that will help you price your home appropriately. As I said before, agents typically ask a 6% commission fee. With a $250,000 house, that could be $15,000. That's a big chunk of change if you are tight on funds and have a lot of moving expenses coming up. If you choose to use a real estate agent, make sure you vet them thoroughly. Interview multiple candidates or get referrals from family, friends, and coworkers. You can also check out customer reviews and make sure they offer the level of customer service that you prefer. Question seven, where does the homeowner inspector come in? As mentioned before, you can certainly get a seller's inspection done before you list your home. Though not many sellers do this, it can definitely help you with prepping your property to sell. Even if you get a seller's inspection done ahead of time, you can generally expect the buyer to have an inspection done on the home once you've accepted an offer. 
the buyer will hire a local inspector to do an evaluation of the property and they will make requests for repairs or expect you to credit them for any problems that are found. The amount that you credit them would come out of the proceeds at closing. Logistically, you don't have to do much to get an inspection done on your home. You or your agent would just have to give them access to the property, including all basements, crawl spaces, and attics. Question eight, what can I do if my home isn't selling? There's a chance your home won't sell as quickly as you like. If this happens, your home might be overpriced for the market that it's in. You should compare your home to recent sales in your area to see if it's comparable with the other homes that are being sold. If it isn't, you can adjust your numbers accordingly. You also may want to stage your home so that it's appealing to buyers as they come in. If you're listing your home for sale by owner, ask for feedback about what they thought about the home or your agent can ask the buyer's agent for feedback on the home. If there's any repairs that are holding back buyers from making an offer, it might be time to consider doing them so that you can get your home sold faster. If your home has been on the market for a really long time, you might wanna consider switching real estate agents to try selling your home in a different way. Choose a real estate agent that has a lot of marketing know-how and local connections. This will increase your home's visibility and the likelihood of a profitable sale. You could also consider taking your home off the market until local conditions change. Question nine, can I take my favorite light fixture or other favorite item with me when I move? Anything that is attached to the house will need to be left with the home for the buyer. This includes light fixtures, built-in shelving units, door hardware, and more. If there is a fixture or something attached to the house that you really want to keep and have in your next home, I suggest that you switch it out with something comparable before showing the home to anyone. If you want to keep that favorite fan, buy another fan and replace it. If you have a special kitchen faucet that you love, switch it out with another kitchen faucet that you're okay with leaving behind. If there's anything else that it seems like you want to keep, make sure it's written in the contract ahead of time. It could be used in negotiations also if they're willing to leave it behind for you. Okay, that's enough questions for today. I hope that's helped answer the frequently asked questions that I hear from sellers all the time about their house. Take care guys, see you next time.